Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Reveal Report. I'm your host, George Iceman. I thank you for joining us on this Friday as we kick off the weekend. Whoa. Hearing an echo, guys. Bear with me. Can you guys hear me? I apologize. I was getting a little bit of an echo. I thank you for joining us, everybody. We appreciate. Sorry that we're late. Just uh, working on a few things because we have an amazing show for you this evening. We're going to discuss Baal worship. Uh, it's in the Bible. Uh, it exists. Um, but the question is, does it exist to this day? So we're going to get into that. I know you have questions. Some of you want to know exactly what is Baal worship. So we're going to talk about that and um, we're going to get into it. I'm going to bring on my uh, co-host, um, author, Miss Jesse Zabolder. Jesse, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, good to see you, George. It's uh, going to be an interesting show today. We're going to get into Baal worship. Um, it's biblical origins, where it's from, what does it mean, what it's about, and um, does it exist today? Do you believe there is a type of Baal worship in today's day and age? Absolutely. Wow. Well, we're going to get into that. And we're going to discuss that. So uh, I got to say, Jesse, Baal worship. It's uh, interesting. And um, let's talk a little bit about the origins of this character. That's the uh, character right there. And uh, that's in a museum. And that's referred to as uh, Baal or Baal. Some may pronounce it. Um, mm -hmm. This is a common picture that people are used to seeing. Whoop, let me go with this one first. Where it's somewhat of a statue. Sometimes resembles it has horns. And the basic information about Baal worship is they would take their own children, the Canaanites and those in those days, would take their own children and sacrifice them to Baal or Baal. And usually it was through fire. Now, this is very medieval in how they did it. And in different generations, it was done in a different way. But sometimes they would light a fire within the statues of Baal or Baal. And they would actually place the child inside this fire. It's absolutely horrific. But these yes. are some of their practices that have been reported. Let me give you a little bit of background on this. Baal or Baal is a Canaanite god of fertility and weather. That's what it was known for originally. Specifically, right. rainstorms. The name was also used as a title, however, meaning Lord. Now that is to go back and forth and debate it, but that's what it says. It was applied to a number of of different deities throughout the ancient Near East. Baal is best known today from the Bible and the Israelite. The Israelites a lot ha had this problem of always worshiping Baal or the Baals, as said by God. Tales concerning Baal date back to the mid 14th and 13th centuries. Um, and it was written and understood to be even much older than that. Mm -hmm. This is very old. Um, some say that Baal has become king of the gods, replacing El. Now, gods with a small g, important when we discuss this. Baal's popularity, attested by the many copies found of the stories that made up the so-called Baal cycle, which relate to how Baal conquers death and assumes the kingship of the gods. The story of Baal's descent to the underworld and return has often been cited as an early example of the dying and reviving God modify, but this has been challenged as Baal does not actually die and return to life. That's correct. But he has been known, this God, by many other names as well. Some will also refer to him as Marduk. Some refer to him as um, uh, 
uh, I mean, there's so many we could go back. I, uh, I was Mol even Moloch is another Moloch. one they sometimes call him. I, I this there was I would some was even referring him to Zeus in some way, shape, or form. These fallen gods, they all relate him for some reason because they are a deity. And one of the most popular stories, Jesse, that I want you to get into is Moses. And when Moses went to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. So if you want to talk a little bit about that story and what happened, because that's a very important story when the world really opened up their eyes to Baal. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, that's mentioned in the books of Exodus. And um, what happened was the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And, you know, in that land of Egypt, uh, they do worship um, a deity that has a bull-like head with horns and oftentimes um, that same statue would be more represented of that first one that you showed of Baal. And uh, they would call that Ra. And he was known as the sun god. And uh, anyway, the Lord, you know, delivers Israel after four years of oppression out of the land of Egypt. And he brings them to Mount Sinai. And he calls Moses up on top of the mountain to give him the 10 commandments. And, you know, the first commandments are, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall make no graven image um, of anything that is in the heavens or in the earth. And you shall not bow down and worship that. And so, you know, after Moses had received those 10 commandments written by the finger of God, he comes down off the mountain. And what does he find? but that the people had got tired of waiting and they had collected all their gold. They had uh, melted it down and they had convinced Moses, his brother Aaron uh, to mold it and shape it into a golden calf representing Baal or Molech. And they began to worship that. And uh, you know, that stirred the anger of God. And uh, in fact, he broke the, the first tablets, the Lord is the one who broke them uh, in that anger. So all throughout history, you know, then this really, you know, the Lord gives Israel a second chance. But we see all through scripture that they do not turn away from their worship of Baal. Instead, uh, they begin to try to worship Baal and his counterpart, Asheroth, in the high places. And they go up on the mountains and they build altars and uh, they would put up two, usually like two poles in front of their altars. And that would represent Baal and Ashtaroth. And then they would, you know, because Baal is um, known for controlling the rain or the storms, um, they would particularly, you know, do big rituals and, and uh, worship festivals to Baal around the times of the equinoxes, um, particularly in the spring. Um, and they want to ask Baal to release that rain. And that was actually, I'm born right in the middle of that. Uh, there's a about a week and a half period of uh, that's known as the Baal uh, high climaxes. And my birthday is right smack dab in the middle of that. Um, but they, you know, as they they would seek Baal to, uh, you know, send the rain, uh, the ways that they would do that in their worship, it, it would be through sexual orgies as well as um, sacrificing their infants or mass amounts of, you know, just be mass amounts of blood because um, Baal is a very bloodlusty demon and requires that blood. So... That's one of the famous stories about him in scripture and the Israelites in, or I'll say Moses' uh, encounter with that worship that the Israelites were engaging in. It's incredible. Here is one of the depictions of Baal. And a lot of them, of course, it, it, you see in the Bible, sometimes it's depicted as a golden calf, a bull. Mm -hmm. And there's the horns on this bull. And you'll see at the bottom, there's an area where they light the fire. 
there are some holes in the middle torso. Well, that's where they could make their sacrifices. But the golden bull comes into play in today's day and age. I thought I'd share this picture with everybody. So the idols we worship in Canaan, there is the golden bull, the golden calf, if you may. That's what they worshiped. And there on the right from Wall Street is another bull. Right there on Wall Street. There he is, huh? It's absolutely incredible from back then to today. Now, again, we're under the assumption that they are still committing these rituals in many different ways. Um, and, and just visually, we're making comparisons. But I found it very interesting, Jesse, that on a recent show, on a recent show, there was a video, an introduction to the Commonwealth Games. And I want to share this video with everybody. And then I want to get your feedback on this, Jesse. So everybody, mm -hmm. please turn up your volume. Take a look. It's about two minutes long. This is the beginning ritual ceremony to the Commonwealth Games. Check it out. Slaved by their terrible circumstances. And now enter the bull. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag into the Alexander Stadium. A beast, a bull, 10 meters high, heavily armored. Now scarred by past hurt and enraged by injustice, the bull breaks free and causes pandemonium. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women break their own chains. Bulls were baited and sold here in the city century for centuries. And his armored mask features the names of the chain makers embossed upon it from those dark days. can calm the bull not Ginny Lemon, she's escaped in her balloon it's no doubt going to be up to Stella and the Dreamers to try and halt the bull the Dreamers have stayed and they are about to offer compassion to a very scared icon of this city Jesse yeah. Did you hear so that? Sometimes I don't know what to say, George, about some of that stuff. I mean, she's walking towards the bull with a big crystal in her hand. <laughs> now, someone made a comment that the majority of the people, in fact, all of them that were pulling this bull in chains, slaves, are all women. So I would like to get a little bit of a decode from what your thoughts and your expectations and a reminder to everybody out there once again, this was a few months ago on television. This was the introductory ceremony to the Commonwealth Games. This was not in a movie. It was not made up. I didn't use any kind of trickery. This exists, and you could find it on YouTube. So, Jesse, what are your thoughts on this? Well, with that, you know, we see in a lot of the current day worship, usually there is some sort of preceding ceremony. And, you know, that ceremony is done in honor of whoever they're elevating um, in that spiritual world. And here, you know, it's interesting that they're very particular about the words that they use. Um, you know, they're relating it to business and to different things. Um, yet they specifically use words like the beast. Most people aren't going to call a bull a beast, you know, so they're very particular about that. And they, you know, talk about those chains and, they start defining some of that. And I agree, it's interesting that it is women that are leading the chains. And I didn't count how many there were. I think there were five chains, which was really interesting. 
uh, but you couldn't quite see how many women were having to pull each chain. Um, you know, just the fact, the animation, they want to create that fear, you know, with the sounds of the beast. And, um, you know, I, I think it goes back to even the times of the Romans where, you know, they would put beasts into the Colosseums and they called those the games. But really, they weren't games. What they were is that they were um, sacrificing the lives of individuals and and many times there were christians in there that you know it wasn't just gladiators fighting each other or gladiators fighting beasts a lot of times there were christians that they were rounding up uh those who worship the lord and they would uh sacrifice them in those game ceremonies so to me you know it it really represents that bondage that um the earth has to that system and you know, what does she offer that beast a little piece of light, but it's not true light. It's light from a rock or something on earth. And it's interesting that it's a woman that tames the beast. Um, so there's a, a lot of different plays on things in that, that video. I found it very interesting. It, it just came out across as Baal worship. You know, the, the, the worship of the bull takes us back to those biblical days where we read the story of Aaron, uh, who fastened a bull with gold and um, and, and made the, the Israelites worship it. And uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, he ended up in God's good graces for a very long time as the lead priest um, at the tabernacle and so forth. His son, some of them didn't do too well because they didn't follow the rules. And God has right. rules. But I found it interesting that this is just a few months ago. And there's so much reference to this imagery of ball. And mm -hmm. I'm going to share another picture with everyone uh, just to get an idea. There's, you know, Lucifer, Moloch, you know, different. There's a statue. There's the Baphomet, a, a beast, a little bit different than Moloch, but, you know. Uh, in different centuries, different generations, his name does change. But what's interesting is the top right corner is someone kind of with wings, kind of the Baphomet with the horns, with the same stands. That's a very famous singer, Jesse. And now it we're is. beginning to see celebrities in mock sacrifices as part of their shows, and they're calling it mm -hmm. artistic it's artistic, Jesse. It's They're an artistic artists. expression, George. I mean, yeah. we got to allow them to have their worship somehow, don't we? No, I don't think we do. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts to this whole celebrity mock ritual sacrifice? Because it's everywhere. And in fact, I've said it on a few shows uh, coming from the world of magic that when you allow your children to go in there of their own free will, when they pay to go into the stadium and see these shows, they are giving up their sovereignty to these spirits and demons. Whatever they bring yeah. with them, whatever they cast out into the audience to have dominion over their lives, you've said, I give you permission. So make sure you say prayers and give glory to God before you enter one of these shows and say, I do not give permission if you're going to go. But that's my take. Just see what's your take on these celebrities all doing these mock sacrifices. Yeah, and you know, I don't think they're, I don't believe they're really mocks. Um, we know in the system that they always do the mirroring. So, you know, they want to replicate that equilibrium of what's in the heavens and what, you know, what's above, what's below. So usually what you find is that you know, they will have what looks like a mock ceremony above. And with that, they're gathering energy. They're getting people excited. Um, they're getting people to blindly sleep like you had expressed. You know, these people are ignorantly participating in a ritual and they have no idea that below their feet, the real ritual is happening, that there are people being sacrificed. Uh, there are demons coming out for demonic revels and, uh, they're engaging in that. And when those people leave those concerts or events, um, you know, those spirits will follow them home and they find themselves experiencing oppression. So it's, it's very real. Another interesting figure 
that came out publicly that a lot of people are discussing. I'll just say the name is Moloch. Mm -hmm. And here is the statue of Moloch. This was a picture taken at Bohemian Grove during, now I'm going to call it a mock ritual because I have no particular proof. But if you say it wasn't mock and it was real, I'll, I'll take your word for it, Jesse. And so apparently they sacrificed. These are grown men, some of high finance, uh, celebrities, power. In fact, I heard that there is a waiting list of wannabe socialites to get into this. Now, this is not a place where people attend anymore. I believe uh, they're not doing this event there anymore. Yeah, it's been closed down for now. It's been, it's been closed down for now. But um, Bohemian Grove, an area where they did these rituals to this statue, Moloch. Is Moloch, Jesse, another version of Baal, another alternative, another name? Or is it a completely different demon? Well, it is, it is a name that sometimes is used interchangeably in different places, mm -hmm. um, especially we find that in scripture. Um, however, in my experience, they are two separate beings. You have Baal, who is often a counterpart with Ashtaroth. And then you have Molech, who, you know, is another demonic principality, but they both have different, um, you know, images that represent them. Um, Molech can be represented as, as a bull or kind of a, a mentador type um, look, but he also often is represented by an owl, whereas Baal is just represented uh, as the bull or sometimes as what we would also call Ra, uh, you know, the sun god image. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my personal belief is that they are two separate beings. Two separate ones. There you go. With okay. different representation. Um, I did reference in a past show about Moloch and um, some of the ancient worship with him. Um, he represents the owl and, you know, mm -hmm. Baal is the calf or the golden bull. Uh, with the horns. Um, and, and that's, again, popping up in pop culture, this type of worship, movies, videos, um, musical awards. Now we're seeing it in sports rituals. But yeah. we also saw, Jesse, and I played the video in the past. I'm not going to play it again. But we also saw this interesting type of worship happen during a tunnel being built underground they thought what a great way to begin uh, a and, tunnel and they, they, i mean they, they, you know oh, you they, need to have a idol there to help you you know burrow i guess uh, let me i mean i'm perplexed with this jesse i am perplexed but this stuff exists it happens and they did an actual ritual ladies and gentlemen um, to the beginning uh, of this tunnel going underground and there were people in costumes. It was quite demonic, if I should say. But I have a video here I'll share. This is a Moloch ritual. It's kind of the same thing, to be honest. Pretty much the same thing um, as Ball or Bale. But I'll share it with you. This is leaked footage from Bohemian Grove. Take a look. Benevolence, which pursues here, has lost its power under these friendly trees. So shall we burn thee once again this night, flames that keep thine empty. We shall read the sign. Midsummer sets us free. You shall burn thee once again. <laughs> which hither ye have fought from regions where I reign. Ye fools and priests, I spit upon your fire. Wow. Prince of all mortal wisdom, all of Bohemia, we beseech thee, grant us thy counsel, You know, the most intriguing thing about that 
is the amount of energy that these adults spent to do this. Mm -hmm. When all, and all they really had to do for power, if that's what they were looking for, is to just be good. Just do good things right. in the world. Put out positive energy and give glory to God. It's that simple. You don't have to go and do all kinds of crazy stuff and make sacrifices and uh, put on robes and be in hidden. And, but they wanted power. Right. And they wanted money. And they wanted to take themselves to the next level. However, we have proof, uh, Jesse. We have legitimate proof that this doesn't work, does it? Because it biblically, biblically, something unbelievable happened where they wanted proof and the Lord decided to send them Elijah. <laughs> and Elijah said, oh, do I have something for all of you who believe in Baal worship and all the priests that are here to represent Baal. For Elijah was alone representing God Almighty. Right. But the Baal priests, there were many. So just 850. To be exact. So I'm going to let right. you take the story and, and let our audience know about Elijah and the priests of Baal and the proof of who really is in control. Yeah, this is one of the greatest stories in scripture. Um, you know, you had Israel that was wavering in their faith and you had, you know, King Ahab who had married the Babylonian princess Jezebel. And she's the one who brought in with her, her priests of Baal. And, uh, you know, they would worship sacrificing children. And the Lord sends Elijah, Elijah to confront them uh, face to face. And he says, all right, we're going to settle this matter. Uh, the God that answers by fire, he's God. So, you know, he conveniently and nicely lets the priests of Baal go first. And he tells them, you know, do whatever they need to do. And, you know, so they built their altar and put everything on it. And they began to worship and sacrifice and nothing happened. And, uh, you know, he said, continue, continue, you know. And after I think they went for quite some time, you know, then he began to taunt and say, you know, well, where is Baal? Is maybe he's inconvenienced to keep going, you know. And they end up cutting themselves, you know, shedding their own blood, trying to get Baal to answer. And in the end, they don't get an answer. So then Elijah uh, says to those who are there, you know, he, he puts wood around the altar and he said, builds a trench and has them dump water over the wood and over the altar. And they he keeps saying more and more and he fills up that trench with water. And, you know, then as he steps back, um, this fire comes out of heaven and consumes the entire thing. You know, it says it even licked up the water off the ground. And that day, you know, there was no wavering. And Elijah gave the command uh, for the 850 priests to be executed. And the people started killing them. Um, so it's, you know, it just shows that power of God that, you know, the only one who answers or can answer as God in those situations is the Lord God Almighty. And the story is incredible. Just listen to that. Elijah had them build a trench all around. So there's a trench all around and he filled it with water. And the Lord sent fire from the sky upon that place. And the fire was so powerful and strong, it even lit up the water. The water <laughs> couldn't even stop the fire. This is the miracle he was trying to prove to everybody, that you bow to fallen idols. Right. Biblically, it says, why is it that your fallen idols of statues cannot hear, but they have ears? They have eyes, but cannot see. They have a mouth, but cannot speak. So go to your balls and worship them on your poles and light your incense to make your sacrifices and nothing will come from it. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So the story of Elijah is to give hope that God Almighty exists with one of his miracles, that he had power. So I say, don't waste your time 
with this demonic evil that's out there. There's no need for all this because the true power lies in the word of God. That's my absolute feeling since I've come to the yes. Lord. True power lies in the word of God. And every day he has a lesson to teach. And we can all learn this lesson. So Jesse, Baal worship or the worship of Baal. You believe that in today's day and age, 2022, it still exists in today's society. Absolutely. Um, you know, I witnessed it a lot as a child. Uh, that was one of the demonic principalities that would be worshipped um, in ceremonies um, that were meant for Baal. Uh, people would wear horns on their head or they would um, have like a, a cow head that had been taxidermied that they would put on as a mask. Um, there was other things, you know, we saw in 2019, the Smithsonian found uh, the, the ball gate from the actual temple of Baal and brought that into Washington, DC. And, you know, there were ceremonies, there were rituals that were done uh, with that actual gate uh, to try to open it up and be able to utilize that with the spiritual gates in that area. And, you know, what were they trying to do? They were trying to bring ball through. Um, but yes, it, it still happens very much today. And again, you see it, it's everywhere. Will it come to an end? I believe that the time is coming where it will come to an end. There will be some of those under darkness, under closed doors, that will try, but they will not succeed. And the Lord will find them, each and every one of them. The time has come and the Lord will have vengeance and he will strike down upon those who do not bow to God Almighty. Um, fasten your seatbelts is all I could say, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a very interesting few weeks in the world today. The good news, to my understanding, is many magical rituals are being shut down. Many doorways are closed. Many portals are locked. There is no communication with some of the 72 uh, demonic generals of Lucifer. Um, and we need to thank God for that and all your prayers yeah. because God is hearing you. So it's happening. Continue those prayers as truth begins to unleash itself upon the world. The awakening is here. And this is a time for... For, for great jubilation, even though there might be some bumpy roads here, we still have to believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Jesse, I'm going to ask you to please say a prayer for everybody here in the chat today, especially a particular person uh, that we're asking who's having a, a family situation. And she's in the chat today. Um, so I'm going to post that right here. Can you please say a prayer? For my um, extended cousin, she's lost two sons, uh, one year fertility, uh, another son in an ICU right now, and I have been on the phone with her praying. So maybe if we could say a prayer for Belinda's uh, extended cousin and everyone here in the chat this evening. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together, Lord, and I thank you that above all things that you are with us in our times of trial in our time of devastation, I ask that you would minister peace to Belinda's family right now. Lord, I ask that uh, with that peace that you would give comfort, that you would console their hearts, that you would carry the sadness for them. And we ask for miracles, Lord. We ask that you would move in a way uh, that is above and beyond what we can hope or dream or imagine. And we just speak that life over her family, Lord. We ask that out of this situation that you will bring life because you are a God of life. And I thank you that you hear our prayers, that you answer us. And I ask that you would speak directly to their hearts tonight, Lord, and that you would speak the words that they need to hear from you. And so we just uh, trust that situation into your hands, and we bless them, Lord. We bless them. 
And Lord, I just ask for everybody here tonight, Lord, um, whatever the trial, whatever the suffering, we lift up our eyes to you and we proclaim that you alone are the Lord God Almighty. You are the, alone are the only one who hears our prayers and you are the only one who has the power to truly help us and, and deliver us and save us out of our sufferings and the trials that we go through. So we turn to you. And Lord, if anybody here is wanting tonight, um, if they have found that, that they need you, I just ask, Lord, that you would make your presence very known. I thank you that all we have to do is come before you and that you are there to hear, to listen, to draw close. So I thank you that um, we can come to you anytime. And I ask that you would deliver each person with a mighty hand. We pray all these things in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Jesse, share with the audience where they could find you and uh, support your ministry. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me in two places. My new website is kingdomlivingwithjesse.com. And I encourage people to watch that. Uh, I put out my first videos on there this past week. And this week we've got our next topic for um, this following Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, show that's going to go out. And if you have questions about that topic, uh, you're free to write in and uh, send us your questions. Uh, you can also find me on illuminatethedarkness.com. And with that ministry, we support a lot of veterans and survivors and whistleblowers. Uh, so if you'd like to help in that endeavor, uh, you can donate uh, to help support those individuals on illuminatethedarkness.com. Excellent. Guys, I want to personally say thank you so much for all the support. Um, it's been unbelievable. This week, many of you here uh, knew that, you know, Sometimes I'm not happy about coming on YouTube because it could be a mean place and I prefer uh, Patreon and uh, you don't always make, um, you know, anything in tips or donations usually doing this. I mean, I, I went for a long period of time, not even making a single dime, but this week, many of you that are here in the chat today and those that are not that will see this uh, in a replay. I thank you all. My heart goes out to you. I am much appreciated for those that sent a tip. Uh, in the uh, donation box on PayPal. It went such a long way. It inspired me, it made me feel good. It made me feel happy. It made me feel like I was doing something great for you guys uh, and that I was appreciated for the work. So all of you who sent anything, anything that was sent through PayPal, God bless every one of you and may the Lord bless you so that you may be prosperous physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally, healthy, uh, and make good things happen to you. Again, all of you, it meant a lot. Um, so thank you again. And if, uh, if you're able to do it, go to paypal.me forward slash George Iceman. Uh, it's there. I want to share something with everybody where I'm going to be. Um, something interesting. The Warren's Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon event happening Saturday, October 29th in Connecticut. They are going to be a huge event over 3,000 thousand people are going to be at this convention and there's going to be some of the most haunted items on the planet and i will be broadcasting live from this event so that's a saturday so if you're a subscriber you're going to be able to see some of my interviews and some of the vendors and some of the haunted artifacts so i plan on interviewing people showing artifacts walking around the trade show and it's basically seekers of the Supernatural. It's the Parano, uh, Paracon convention. And uh, for tickets, it's on uh, Nespar, N E S P R dot ticketbud.com. If you would like to get tickets, it's a full day event. All the details are there. I'll even put it in the description if you'd like to get tickets. So again, come and meet me. Come to the booth where I'm going to be. Come say hi. Come take a picture. Come hang out. Share some stories with me. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll even get you on the air. So I will be there. Again, Paracon, the convention in, it's going to be Connecticut, Saturday, October 29th. And I'm excited for that. And again, if you can contribute, go to paypal.me forward slash George Iceman. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Jesse, we're going down to uh, uh, Patreon next. And we're going to have yeah. everyone who comes and join us, especially our members, 
uh, an opportunity to have a Q&A, ask me something, ask you something, whatever they want. So they get a Q&A, they get to ask questions, share some stories with us on Patreon. Coming up next. So without further ado, Jesse, anything you want to add before I say goodnight? No, I think that was great. Good show. Excellent. Great show. Thank you again, Jesse. Thank you all for watching. God bless. Remember to get outside, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D, and most importantly, give grace, glory, and praise to God Almighty.